All right, coming at you live with another video. This video is pertaining to your uh, PlayStation 3 running custom firmware, CEX or DEX versions. Uh, with this video, uh, the files that you're going to get, you're going to have to either download the CEX or the DEX version, uh, which I have both. The links will be below in the description. This is for RetroArch version 1.7.9 version 2, uh, I guess. This is what they call it. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to show you how to install this emulator, and uh, that's pretty much it. So, first and foremost, this emulator from RetroArch uh, has 45 cores, so it has everything from Neo Geo to uh, the Sega systems, uh, let's see, Nintendo, Super Nintendo, uh, Sega Master System, um, what else? Uh, Actually, I got it written down. Hold on. There's there's a lot of them in here. Uh, bum, 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 bum. It's got a MAME core. That's good. Uh, PC Engine, uh, Game Boy Advance, Game Boy. Uh, let's see. Because it has a Swarm emulator. And, uh, yeah, Game Boy Color. And Atari. Whole bunch of goodies but yeah I'm gonna leave the description of the cores in the description below as well so that way you guys can look at it but most of your generics are there the only thing it doesn't have is an n64 core because for some reason we can't get a Nintendo 64 emulator to work on ps3 so we can get it to work on PSP but not ps3 makes sense but anyway so what you're gonna need is a uh, thumb drive which I have right here and Here's the root directory of the thumb drive. All you're going to do is you're going to take your CEX or your DEX uh, version of this. Now, if you have CEX custom firmware, you're going to use the CEX, obviously. That goes for you REX, uh, the REX users for Rebug. And then you have DREX or DEX custom firmwares. We'll be using the DEX version of this. So I have CEX. I'm going to use the CEX and just copy that over like so. Allow that to copy over to the root directory of your USB. And then once that's done copying over, we can pop on over to the PlayStation 3. Alrighty, so here we are back at the PlayStation 3. What you're going to do is uh, boot into your main user here, like I'm doing here, and uh, scroll over to your Packages Manager. If you don't have Packages Manager, just simply uh, go into Multiman and load your uh, packages through the installation package files in the main settings there. So inside Package Manager here, we're just going to go to Install Package Files. Click X on that and go to Standard. Once you click Standard, you're going to search for your RetroArch PS3 uh, CEX or your DEX version. Hit X on that to install, and for the sake of time, I've already done that. The install is probably going to take about 15 minutes, just to let you know. But once that's installed, I'm going to come down here and uh, boot up the RetroArch uh, for PS3. Alrighty, screen should pop up any minute. There we go. Okay, so uh, here's your options here, and uh, let's go check out. Yeah, we'll check out the leads first. So you can load the core and choose which core to start with. Um, you can load your content. You can uh, do an online update uh, from this, and uh, that's pretty much it. So I have the uh, 1.79 SNES 9X 2005 core loaded, I believe. Um, yeah, it says it right down on the bottom. So if I go to load core, let's see. Let's pick. Uh, Yeah, let's do NES. I believe that's what it says on the bottom left-hand corner is your current loaded core. Uh, yep, that's it. So that's that'll display your current loaded core uh, down the bottom there. So if we come over to settings. You have your drivers for your controls and such like that. You can change the video output, audio output. Um, Input, you can change your joypad, keyboard, and mouse settings, blah, blah, blah. File browsing, saving, all that fun jazz. I'm not going to go over everything because there's a lot of options here. 
so you will have to just kind of explore on your own. Uh, no favorites are available. You can set those. Uh, this is the uh, last loaded game that I did. Uh, and that's pretty much it. You could also play as a net host, which is kind of cool, I guess. So let's go to uh, load content just to show you how to load content. Now, my content is... Uh, I have it all specifically divided between emulations uh, or emulators. So that is going to be in my game folder, actually. So I'm going to have to do a long little navigation here. Let's see. Uh, what the heck was the uh, yeah, FCEU 9000? That's the Nintendo emulator. And ROMs. Uh, wait a minute, no. I think that's Final Burn Alpha. I don't know. That is D-pad hero. Uh, so yeah, so this is Nintendo. Uh, just like the first ever Nintendo ROM. And what you're going to do is hit X on that ROM, and it'll ask you to use your current core or a different core. And uh, there's multiple cores. Some cores might not work. If you end up getting a black screen, just reboot your system and try a different core with that ROM. Uh, but that's pretty much it. So this one should work uh, because it's the same type of core as the type of ROM. So let's try it out. Yeah, so it's going to boot up and it's going to say preparing for content scan and uh, load your 6 access, uh, access controller configuration to port 0 uh, which is the first port and uh, that's pretty much it so you just wait for this to scan if it doesn't scan in five minutes then you gotta try another core in order to boot the ROM which is kind of annoying but then you're better off just using other emulators but the wide range of cores that are available, you can find something that works. So, break on, subscribe, let me know what bugs you find and such in the retro arc, uh, and then I can probably post it up on their forums and let them know. Uh, but that's pretty much it. So again, the links will be in the description below, and enjoy uh, for what it's worth on what you can get working with the retro arc emulation. So I'll talk to you guys later, and enjoy.